Hi folks, so in this final video here, uh, what we're going to be doing is making a cord and a little plug socket and that is our lamp finished, okay? Um, the way we're going to make the cord is by using a feature called the sweep and we want to make the plug by possibly doing a sketch and then mirroring over half and then we'll make the little prongs and things like that. Now, the cord here is really, I suppose, the hard part in this because what we're going to be doing is a little 3D sketch. Now, my cord, the way I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to have it come out of um, the actual lamp part here. And uh, what it's going to do is so it's going to come out, wrap around, and then it's going to wrap around this way and maybe finish somewhere about here at the side of it, okay? Um, and we're going to do a little 3D sketch there for that. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to create some points to create our 3D sketch. So once again, looking at this plane here, we're going to look at the right plane, click on right plane and sketch. And all I want for my cord is that it's going to have a series of points. So I'm actually going to get a center line to start off with. And I'll do the center line, just thinking, where's that there? About there, I think. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to smart dimension then. So I did a center line from there. I'm going to smart dimension down about 100. And really, that's the point there that I just want. Now, from there, I'm going to set up a couple of more points. So I get sketch, and I click on point. Okay. And what I'm going to do is, in line with that, it's going to go down. Then I'm going to start bringing it over here, this point. And then it's going to go out to this point here. And then it's going to start to go down. Okay, so that's the, the shape of the cord that I want. Okay, now I need to smart dimension those points. So this point down to this point, I'll set the vertical distance. I'm going to say 23. And the next thing I'm going to do with the point is click on the point, then hold down control and click on the center line and make for, let's see here if I can actually make that vertical. I click on this point, sorry, click on this point, hold down control, click on this point, and click vertical. There you go. That's what I wanted to do. So just to repeat that step, I'm going to click on this point, hold down control, click on this point, and click vertical. There we go. Now what I want to do is I have to dimension every other point in relation to the previous one. So this one, I want the vertical and horizontal distance. Click, click. There is the vertical distance, so I'm just going to say 16. Then I'm going to get the little horizontal distance, that's in 4.81, I'll say 5. And then I'll do the exact same with this one to this one. So it's 15 in length. And then I'll get the vertical drop. Now I'm going to bring that down a little bit. I think these come down a bit further. So 8, yeah, it come down here. And then now on to the next one. The horizontal distance, I'm going to say 25. And then the vertical height, I'm going to say 7. Okay, so there we have it. Um, you can roughly guess it, okay? But really all we were concerned with there was the points. Now I'm gonna exit that sketch. And what you'll notice is if I turn on my hidden detail view, you can see the multiple points that we have. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna go down, 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 okay, and so on. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll turn on my color view again. Now I need to create a plane uh, for my next series of points, okay? So to do the next series of points, I need a plane. I'm going to make the plane 12.5 above the ground line, the top plane. So if I go Features, and I select Reference Geometry and Plane, we're going to make a plane, okay, but we need a reference. Now I'm going to set the reference as the ground. Is it the top plane? Just check where the top plane. Now the top plane is sitting above that. So I'm not going to use that at the top plane, apologies. So my first reference, I clicked on it and I deleted. So if you have top plane selected, you can click it here and click delete on your keyboard. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to set this as my first reference, this one here. And you can see it will go down. Now the distance I want is 12.5. But instead of going down, I want to go up. So I'm going to change the direction. So flip offset and click the green arrow to accept. Okay. And there's a little plane that I have. Now I'm going to do a sketch on that plane. I'm going to hide the plane first, but I'm going to do a sketch on the plane. So you can see the plane is hidden, but it's still there. Click on plane to click on sketch. Um, now you can see my points. I'm actually going to press my space bar and click on this little tool here. It's after coming in from underneath. 
and this will look it down it's by pressing that so see here spacebar normal two i can flip if i'm looking at the bottom or the top of the object i want to be looking from the top so there's my points and i wanted to wrap around this way so now i'm going to get a series of more points get a point so my last point was about there so now i'm going to imagine it curls out here now it's going to start i don't i don't need too many from there I think that's appropriate and then from I'm going to smart dimension those so remember like we did previously horizontal distance first so I'll say 17.5 19 is perfect don't have to give it round numbers this is just how I'm doing it 34 there's the vertical height between them you might have to drag it out a certain way I'm going to say 6 and same thing here 30 I'll say 40 vertical height 25 horizontal 10.84 I'm going to say 11 and vertical height let's say 38 okay now to finish it off I'm going to do a center line From here just down to there like that I'll smart to mention that the length of that center line it's a vertical line I'm going to say 30 perfect and now i'll exit my sketch now what you'll see is we have a series of points okay and we're going to use that to create a 3d sketch okay so to do a 3d sketch what we're going to do just make sure that your sketches are visible you can see here sketch 19 and sketch 20 if they're not visible you can see here mine i can hide them i don't want to hide them i want them to be showing so click on sketch click show if it's not visible now what you want to do then is you want to go to sketch tab then go to the sketch icon here click the drop down arrow and click 3d sketch okay now what we want to do after doing that is we want to start a sketch in and this point here so i'm going to go into my hidden detail view to find my points now this is you have to be accurate here to start off i want to start off with a vertical line so i'm going to get a sketch i'm going to get a line now we're sketching in 3D, so you'll see a little YZ come in. Okay, don't worry about that. All I want to do is I want to do a vertical line from here to here. Click from point to point. Line is still active, press escape. You'll see the line will come in fully to point because we're using points that we have previously um, dimensioned. Now I'm going to get another vertical line. And I'm going to do or another line. And I'm going to do the line from this point to this point. And press escape. Now, what I need to do next is a spleen using all these points, okay? So if we go to the sketch tab and you come over here and you'll see a spleen, select this. Now, we just want spleen. Don't worry about style, spleen on surface, equation, just spleen. Now, I'm going to start at this point, click onto this point, click, click onto the next point. Make sure you're clicking onto the points, very important. Click, click click and to here click now to deactivate see the way it's still active just press the escape key and you'll see that has come in fully defined and it's a nice 3d sketch okay and obviously we're working in three dimensions here now the only thing i would like to do is i want to make this spleen tangential with this line so it goes in a bit smoother and this one tangential with this line so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the spleen hold down control click on the vertical line and make tangent and likewise see where there's a little bulge here we want to get rid of that click on the spleen hold down control click on the line tangent and you can see it's smooth it, it, it flows out with a lot smoother now having done that i'm going to now exit my sketch okay i will now hide sketch 19 and also hide sketch 20. okay and all that we're left with is the 3d sketch now I'm going to use that 3D sketch to create a sweep. Okay, so I'm going to go Features, Swept Boss Base. Now this time, instead of having a profile, because I don't have a profile created, you could technically create a profile on maybe, um, I could pick this point here and create another plane, but I just want my, um, my cards just to be circular. So I'm going to select Circular Profile, and all and i can set the size of it here and now i'm going to say four mil and just i'm going to go with four at the start and i'll see what it looks like but i still need a path to follow so select the path 
and there you go when I select the path there there it is okay and you can see the nice kind of little curvature and it kind of does look like a card should look okay um, I am going to merge this and I'm going to merge it with the um, with the neck part of it here okay so on tick auto select and then just tick on this part of the body you'll see here if I go into color mode so I've selected that part so on tick auto select I want it to be part of that now it automatically should be because that's the only part it's touching but just for my own I suppose peace of mind I will select that as well click on the green arrow okay and there it is there's our little sweep created now what we have to do is we have to create a plug on top of that so if you remember we have a plane created previously plane 2 I'm going to click on plane 2 I'm going to click on sketch uh, once again press your space bar and click this button normal 2 I want to be looking down now I'm going to get a center line to start off with and because I've got a nice straight edge here straight line there I'm going to use this point as my guide click from there drag down click straight away I will smart dimension that line I want that line to be 50 and the dimensions I'm going to use for a plug, I'm just roughly guessing it, but you can see I'm going to make this rough shape here, and it's 50 long, it's 47.8, I'm just going to go 50 high, okay? We're just making a rough plug. So to do that, I'm going to start off by getting a line. I'm going to go here, I'm going to go into the left here, sorry, get a line, like that, out to about there, and... Then I'll go like this, something like that, and into there like that. And that's all I want to do. I'm going to do a couple of dimensions now. I'm going to say that's 25. I'm going to make this, we'll go 20. We'll see what 20 looks like. Yep, 20 is fine. And now what I want to do is I'm going to fill at the edges, fill at the corners. So we're going to go sketch tab, sketch fill it. I'm going to set the distance 10 is fine at the start. I'll see what 10 looks like. Yeah, that's okay. And I think that's appropriate as well. Click on the corners. There we go. Now I'm going to mirror that over to the opposite side. So I'm going to X out of my sketch fillet, go into my sketch tab, mirror entities, and select the line, the line, the line, the arc, the line, and then mirror about, select the center line, and click on the green arrow. Okay. Now, what you'll see if I rotate into the kind of an angular view here you can see I've got a sketch in the middle now I want to extrude that going down and up okay so to go down I'm going to go features extrude boss base and all I'm going to do is I'm going to see where it says blind here I want this to go down to the ground remember my plane was 12.5 up so I'm going to set the distance to 12.5 down now I also need this to go upwards so I'm actually going to select direction 2 I don't want it to go up the exact same um so i because if i did that i could just use mid plane i just wanted to go up 10 and by selecting direction to blind will come in and 10 is automatically there but if yours comes in differently just make sure you have the condition of blind set and 10 and i'm happy with the size of that plug there now and i'm going to click on or sorry on tick auto select and tick on the cord and you can see it will become part of the neck part there and click on the green arrow okay now, all we're going to do is we're going to create a little hollow on this. So, and we're going to cut down into it to make a little ridge. And then we will make the prongs and we're nearly done. So if we click on this surface and click on sketch. Now what I want to do straight away, I'll click out here. See the way the surface was blue? Just click out here uh, into the open space to deselect that. And now I'm going to click sketch. I'm going to select offset entities. The distance is one. I'm absolutely fine with that. And now I'm going to click on this face. See the way it comes on the outside? I don't want that. I want it to be on the inside. So click reverse. Click on the green arrow to accept. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm now going to go features and extrude cut. And I'm going to cut down not far. I'm only going to cut down about one mil. We'll see what it looks like. Yep, one is absolutely fine. Click on the green arrow to accept. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this face to sketch the prongs. So I'm going to click on that face and click sketch. I'm going to get a center line to start off with. And once again, do a center line from this point this time down to about here. Okay. And now I'm going to get a center point rectangle. And I'm going to dimension. There's that one. And next time I'm going to get three lines. I'm going to get the line tool. And I'm going to do a line from the center line roughly. We're just putting it in roughly for now. And I'm going to draw, press escape. Three lines like that. Now I'm going to start by dimensioning 
this guy here, I'm going to make it 9. Actually, I'll go back and check my dimensions here just to see what it, the length is. It's saying 6.5. Okay, so 7. And that's 4. Okay. So I'll actually go 7. And then this distance here is 4. So there's one of them. Now I need it in the right spacing. So I'll go back and I'm just going to check my dimensions here from the height down. So it's 32.5. I'm going to say 35. So I'm going to mention from here to here. I'm going to say 35. So you can see where I dimensioned there from this line to the bottom line. And now I'm just going to go back in and check. Sorry. And do they give us the gap? 22, so 11. Okay, I'll go a little bit bigger. So now from the center point to here, this is 11. I'll see. I'm going to go 12. I'm just going with what I think looks appropriate. Okay, now I've done uh, one of the prongs. Now I'm going to do the other one here, but I'm, this is only a half one. So instead of it being four dimension here, I'm going to make this two. And this will still be seven. But it's important what I dimension the length of it and how far it's away from this one. So I'm just going to go back in and check. And is there a gap between those? I'm just trying to see is there any distance I can reference that up. So the center point. So the top line is 22 roughly. So it's from the center point. Was it this? Sorry, apologies. Center point. Okay. So if that's seven, it'd be 25. From there to there, I'm gonna make that. Let's see. Yeah, 22. So I did that line there to that one. Was it meant to be 25? Sorry, apologies. No. Yeah, I'll go with. I like the 22 better. Okay. Do you know what? We'll go half and medium, 23.5 in between the two. Okay. Now, having done that, what we're going to do is we're going to go sketch, mirror entities, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to select this line, this line, this line, this line, this one, this one, and this one. Mirror about, select the center line, and click the green arrow to accept. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude those. Now, I know in reality they come up a bit higher, but just for the sake of this, I'm going to bring them up all the same size. So I'm going to extrude those. I'm going to say 20. Just going to rotate. 20 looks a little bit big there. I'm just going with 18. There we go. Click the green arrow to accept. Merge result is fine. It'll only be part of this body. If you want to untick auto select and select that, you can. But there we go. And now what I want to do is I want to kind of make a chamfer on the top of those. So I'm going to go Features. I'm going to go Fill It. Click the drop down arrow and click Chamfer. And I'm going to set the distance here. Instead of 10, 10 will work. I'm going to go 1 mil. And I'm going to select every surface at the top. Just something like that. There we go. There is our plug. Okay. Um, so there you have it, guys. That there was working on the card and the plug. Right now, last thing I'll do once again is I'm going to rename some of my features here. So I'm going to say, click on it, press F2. So this is cord sweep. You could say cable sweep. Um, I'm going to say plug body. Boss extrude. F2. Plug detail. Boss extrude. Prongs. Prong, sorry, and then finally, chamfer is fine. You can leave that. Okay, um, everything is renamed there, so we're happy with that. And there is our um, our plug. Okay, now really quickly, I'm just going to show you how to maybe create some um, before we go into the multi-body approach and export the parts. I'm just going to show you how to maybe do some editing of the colors. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole thing here in the video. I'll just show you one or two surfaces. And uh, you can obviously go on and do that before, uh, to finish off before going to the multi-body approach. So at this point now, I will save it. So I'll go file and save. Should automatically save for us. If you want, you can always go file, save as. Uh, click on das desk lamp project and click save. And that will just replace it. Same thing. Now, what we want to do is I'm going to add a little color to this shade part here. So let's say I just want, I can do it by bodies or I can do it by surfaces, things like that. Now, if I click on this guy here. Let's say I click on that and see the little color wheel go into the appearances here. So if you click on this, little box come up with appearances. Now I can either do an individual face, 
I could do the step, which is the shade revolve, or I could do the whole body, whatever it's part of as well. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I will actually select the body in this case, uh, and that will be the same as the shade revolve. Now I'm going to go with a metal appearance. So I'm going to go metal. I'm just going to say, it doesn't really bother me, I'd say, I'm going to go aluminium or steel. I'll go with a aluminium. I'll go with polished aluminium, brushed aluminium. Okay, uh, but I'll give it a color and I'm going to make it a red. Okay, um, you can obviously play around with colors and things like that and click the green arrow. And there we go. And um, that there is the, um, the, sorry, the body there. So if I right click on that and click isolate, the whole part of it will have been done red. So I'm happy with that. Um, now, let's say I do the base as well and we'll make that. We'll go with a black base or something. Actually, I'll go with I'll go with the this guy here, the switch. So if I click on this guy, now you'll see the body. If I click on it and then go to the colors appearances and see where it says body, I'm gonna do the whole body first. I'm gonna make it a black switch. I'm gonna go with plastic. I'm gonna go with a medium gloss. I'm gonna go to black, but there's usually a dark gray option. I prefer that one. There we go. Dark gray. Click the green arrow. But let's say I wanted the color inside here now. now. Don't worry about that sketch. Oh, just realize that sketch is visible. If I click on that. Oh, no, it's not visible. It's just because I did the body. Sorry. Now, I want these to be a different color inside here. So what I can do is if I click on this and then hold down control and click on this one, um, I can click on appearances and then I can select face this time. So let's say I want these to be plastic as well I'll go medium gloss again but let's say I want them to be white okay and I want to click on the green arrow to accept and there we go now they kind of stand out a little bit more okay um, so you can do individual faces you can do bodies or you can just do the step okay you could even just do the fillet edge and things like that um, so basically that's kind of where I'm at at the moment in the next video this will be fully colored and we're going to do the multi-body approach we're going to create an assembly and we're going to create an exploded view okay which are very handy tools and then we'll get into the drawing part okay hope you found it helpful guys and um, that's that video done